what I wish I'd known the most is um, to not be afraid to ask for help. Uh, everyone tells you that it's going to be difficult, but they don't tell you that certain bits are going to be more difficult than others. I knew that doing a PhD would be a very a kind of individual experience. And I do spend most of my time on my own, so I have to really seek out opportunities like this um, sort of event to be able to connect with other PhD students. Like the results that you get, a lot of that was 99% doing things wrong and then getting 1% right, and that's based on four years. So, so uh, I'm in the process of writing my first paper at the moment, and it's been hell. Uh, it's just draft backwards and forwards, and it's probably just part of that learning process of trying to do something new. So I'd say maybe the main thing would be, um, particularly in science, maybe the, the job prospects. Um, if you do a PhD, you kind of want to do a postdoc and a, and a PI position or something like that, and it's, it's not paid very much money, so if you're, if you're into money, probably not great. So I was kind of expecting to start the PhD and there'd be other first years and they'd all kind of be like me having just come from an undergrad and, or a master's and you know not really know what they were doing and then it was kind of surprising how many people were already quite well established functional adults. I wish I'd known how to get funding so that I wouldn't have to work so hard. Um, I think it takes up a huge amount of time. You're two weeks over the deadline you haven't handed in so you feel a bit guilty but nothing's going to make you do that except yourself sitting down and going okay so I'm gonna knock out the rest of this chapter and yeah so you just have to do it really. <laughs> and is now finally going to talk to us about stopping cancer's clock. Amy! Okay so this is a cell one of the fundamental lego bricks if you like of our bodies and it's easy to take them for granted but they are working round the clock every day to keep us alive. So for example, think of your constantly beating heart cells, or your brain cells, or the cells in your ear, or your eyes, listening to me talk right now. I know everybody who starts a PhD knows that it's going to be challenging, but the, from the people I've been talking to, nobody seems to anticipate just how it's going to be challenging. Why is that? Um, well, they find out about a PhD by reading the prospectus or going online. It doesn't tell them anything about doing a PhD. It explains that the academics have published some books and it's a top research department. And so people enter a PhD with very little knowledge what it is and what it entails. So um, what they find is it's hard work. It's a big commitment. It's going to take over their lives. Things will go wrong. Things will be delayed. There'll be crises. And that means that an awful lot of people take far longer than they expected. We published some articles in The Guardian about doing a PhD. And I got a lot of correspondence from people saying, but it's much more problematic than that. And so we then did another article, which was uh, the hazards of doing a PhD, what arose, what people had met. And that has led to a continuous correspondence with me so about two people a week email me saying, do not tell my supervisor I've been in touch, but I have a problem. I'm doing this PhD because I really love cells. I'm passionate about cell biology. I love the subjects. I love lab work. But I'd experienced members of my family having cancer. So those two factors, sort of the curiosity I had for cells as well as the personal motivation of the disease that made me think okay I really want to learn more about this and do something to help. I think with a lab-based PhD the combination of the practical work and of course the independent study means that it's more it feels like um, a mixture of employment whilst being a student. In terms of the relationship with the supervisor um, he provides a lot of the ideas behind my projects and throughout the course of the PhD I learn how to do that myself. For that reason we see each other quite often, maybe more than some other types of PhD. So we'll see each other every day, we'll chat every day and have a formal meeting once a week. What I'd wish I'd known before I started my PhD is that even though it's really important to be passionate and motivated, 
Sometimes it's best to not be too emotionally involved with your experiments because research is research. Sometimes things don't work and that's okay. If you let yourself get too influenced by how your data is going, you can get yourself quite miserable. It's very easy for it to take over your life, um, which sounds dramatic, but I, it, it can do.